Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 21. Isaiah chapter 21. Several weeks ago we were teaching on the uh, Lord walking on the water. And when He came to the disciples, the Bible says He came in the fourth watch. Isaiah chapter 21 and pick up verse 6. It says, For thus saith the Lord, For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried, A lion. Now that, that's kind of strange. I mean, how, how did these horsemen and chariots of asses and chariots of camel become a lion? Now there's, this is, sometimes when these prophets are prophesying, they're putting some spiritual stuff in there for you to get. And that's, this passage, it doesn't really make sense until you look at things from a spiritual light. And he cried, a lion. My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. O oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma, he shall call me out of Seir. Watchmen, what of the night? Watchmen, what of the night? The watchmen said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll take and be with this message. I pray that you'll fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I know this passage is not one that I completely understand, and I don't know everything about it, and uh, I just pray that you'll take and uh, use me as I preach this, and maybe teach some lessons out of your word that will realize that the importance of watching for your return and being that voice of warning and what the responsibilities of the watchman is and that we'll also realize what part of the night we're in. And I pray that you'll take and bless this message. I pray that you'll fill me with your Holy Spirit and speak through me this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It says here, Watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? What of the night? I made the statement a few weeks ago that we are in the fourth watch of the night. The fourth watch of the night. And the question came up, can you show us that we're in the fourth watch of the night? And to be honest with you, no, I cannot. What I can show you is what the scripture says about the watchman about the night and about the second coming of the Lord being the day star rising. And you all have to come to the conclusion, where are we right now? And when you look at the signs of the time, I will still stand behind my statement, we're in the fourth watch. We're in the fourth watch. Now there is four watches in the Bible. There's four watches and that the, of night. One has to do with the, and we'll get to that, we'll go to the fourth watches, but first of all, I want to emphasize something about the watchmen. The first thing I want to point out in this passage is if you look in verse 6, it says, For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. What he seeth. The job of the watchman is to set up on a tower and give warning to the city below what he sees around him. 
what he see, whether it's danger or they have watchtowers here all through uh, the forest. And them guys are set up to watch to see if a fire comes. So they can be the first warning that that fire has started. And that's how they know when these forest fires start. Because they have watchmen on watchtowers on these big... How many of you ever hiked up to a fire tower? And how many have ever been in one where somebody's living there? You know, they had a job offer for a watch uh, tower out in the Swan Range several years back. And I took and uh, read that job description, man. You had to go up there and live up there. I like, oh, to be a single man again. <laughs> I mean, not, not to say, I mean, if I didn't have no responsibilities, man, I'd be up there. No, I wouldn't, honey, I wouldn't trade the watchtower for you. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> but, the, but that's the thought. I mean, I, I got too many responsibilities. Go park myself, I mean, unless you want to go, honey, with four kids. We'll go stay up on watchtower all summer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, what a job. What a job. But we have a job as a watchman, a spiritual watchman. We're set up as the watchman of the city. And that watchman's job is to give warning. In Ezekiel chapter 3, take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel chapter 3 and look at verse 17. Ezekiel 3, 17. The Bible says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. It's to give a warning to someone. That's the job of the watchman. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. If he gives the warning, he does his job. But if he doesn't give the warning, there's a responsibility that's laid on him that the people that died that were not warned are responsible. For, he's responsible for them. Now, if they won't heed the warning, they're responsible. We, they have a great big thing in Kabul, uh, in Afghanistan. There's two sides to this story with these American citizens getting out of Afghanistan. Now, they've been talking about removing the military from Afghanistan for a while. And there is a certain amount of responsibility that kind of does fall on the citizens. And that argument is not completely unlegit. Now, I think it could have been done a whole lot better. Amen. But that argument has some legitimacy to it. The danger was warned about. And they should have heeded the warning and got out of there. Some Jews probably choose not to, whether it's because they have personal interests there, maybe family that can't leave. Uh, we've been in that war 20 years. I'm sure there's been some marriages and some families, some kids born in Afghanistan and different things. So some people may have some personal reasons why they want it to stay. Okay, But they were giving that warning. There's a responsibility to the watchmen to give the warning. There's a responsibility to the people to heed to the warning. Fish and Game sent out a warning to all hunters that bear activity was high this year. Now, you can heed that warning or you can ignore that warning. Me and Brother DeVore went hunting together yesterday. And he took and carried enough arsenal to put me out of my misery if something happened. We heeded the warning. <laughs> you know, that's uh, uh, normally I always go hunting by myself. I have nobody to put me out of my misery. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm joking here. I'm joking. But he was a backup. 
He was a backup. And you, and you know, they always warn you, especially in bow season, to hunt with a partner. That's a warning. Okay? Say, so you, you, you always hunt by yourself? Well, most of the time I do. But I do that with the awareness that I am not heeding their warning. That warning actually is a good warning. That is good advice. That's good advice. I mean, and you get a year like this year where it's a drought year. You don't have the berries up top and stuff. You don't have that food source for them bears like you normally. What are they going to do? They're going to walk down through Pablo looking for food. I went down to uh, Missoula to drop my mom off in the early morning light, and I almost hit a bear around our lead. We went in the early morning light, and I had a bear run across in front of me. What are they doing? Down on the highway. Why are they down on the highway? They're probably picking up carcasses. Down on the highway, in the middle of houses and stuff. So this year will be a bad year, and this is what Fishing Game was saying, for bears, because it was a drought year. You, you can't expect this is going to be a bad year for them, where they're coming down into the valley and stuff. There will be a certain amount of occasions. That is a watchman giving a warning to a danger that they see. All right? We as Christians are to give the world a warning to the dangers we see. You know, we see a one world government setting up. We see the time of the end. We see the tribulations right around the corner. We know that they can escape from the tribulation. We should be giving them warning how to get saved from what is fixing to come. There is an escape from that, and it's our job to give them that warning. So that watchman is given the job of giving the warning. Also, the watchman has to proclaim what he sees. In verse 8, in Isaiah 21, 8, it says, And he cried, A lion, my Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. Now, it says that he sees a chariot with asses. He sees this, but he says, I see a lion. I see a lion. Now, if you can't get the spiritual application of what that warning is, man, you don't know your Bible real well. The Bible talks about Satan being a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The warning of the watchman is to give a warning to the inhabitants about the lion. And not just the lion, there's many lions we have to warn people about. Take your Bible and again and turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. And look at verse 25. There's many lions in the Bible. Jesus Christ is even a lion. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he comes back as a lion, let me tell you, the inhabitants of the earth ought to be warned about that lion too. Because he's coming back to destroy them. When he comes back as a lion. First time he came as a lamb. Second time he's coming as a lion. There will be no laying down his life the second time. There's going to be blood to the horse's bridle. The second time. He's coming as a lion. And that warning, that lion is a danger. And we're supposed to warn about the lions that we see. Look at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25. The Bible says, There is this conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. You know, they're saying, who's these lions? These lions are false prophets and false priests. 
And you say, what's the mark of them? Well, they take, and take the holy and they make it profane. They call evil good and good evil. They don't distinguish from what's filthy and what's clean. From what's righteous and what's not. I remember one time when I was down in Florida in Bible school, I went up to Mobile, Alabama to preach with a couple of other guys and we were going to go preach at this sodomite parade. I personally would not recommend anybody do that. But I went up and I did that. I was a little bit full of zeal at that time. And I got separated from my group and I was out there alone preaching at this sodomite parade. That's another bad thing you don't want to do. Well, you know what was the most disgusting thing about that parade? It wasn't the fact that they were riding around in garments that just should not be allowed in public. It wasn't the fact that they had children holding their banners walking out in front of these parades. The thing that was so disgusting about it was it was a church that was sponsoring the parade. That was disgusting about it. It was all disgusting. But that was what was the most disgusting about the whole thing. And, you know, there's lions out there. And they're, uh, in verse 27 it says, Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. You know what is it the problem with that Ezekiel was challenged with, all the politicians and the preachers were in cahoots together. Says the princes. So not only did you have a, he have a problem with the priest being profane, he had a problem with the princes being profane. You know, when, I mean, our forefathers were wise when they made a separation of church and state. And, and you know, any time a church runs a state, things go wrong. And any time a state runs a church, things go wrong. If you separate the two, fine. You know, the preacher's there to say, thus saith the Lord, and the state is there to put correct uh, laws and judgments. But they're not to work together for gain. And you know, that's what you have right going on right now. That's what you have going on right now. The church has been politicized. It's been politicized. I mean, uh, you taking a, you let me say what I really mean about the sodomite. You let me say what I really think. And then you put it on that air. You see how quickly we'll be shut down. We've been politicized. And if you don't fall into the line of politics, you're criminalized as a Christian today. That, that, that's where we're at. You know why? Gain. Gain. I know what the motivation behind all this craziness is. Somebody's gaining. Somebody's gaining. There's an old saying, if it don't make sense, there's a buck in it. And let me tell you, don't ever forget that one. That is so true. So we're to give warning about the lions that we see. Then we have the time of the watchman. And the watchman cried, A lion, my lord, I stand up continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I have set and ward full nights. Now, the Lord breaks down the night watch in four watches. Take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Now, our clock technically is set up wrong. A Jewish day begins on the sixth hour at 6 a.m. in the morning. And it ends at 6 p.m. And the Jewish night starts at 6 p.m. and ends at 6 a.m. And that watch is divided in three hour segments. Six to seven, seven to eight, and seven to nine is the first watch. The second watch is nine to ten, ten to eleven, eleven to twelve. That's the second watch. 
The third watch is 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. And then the fourth watch is 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. That's the wee hours in the morning. And the fourth end watch ends with the sun coming up. It's called the morning watch. Now, look at Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. It says, Take ye heed and watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, now here's the four watches. At even, that's going to be six to nine. Or at midnight, that's nine to twelve. Or at cock crowing, or in the morning. There's four watches. So you got the morning watch, which start, is right here at six. Cock crowing is going to be over here. Over here. That starts... Three to six, you go from cock crowing to morning. The morning comes up, the sun comes up at six o'clock. Comes up at six o'clock. So that's your four watches. He gives you four watches there. Now, uh, if you've ever lived on a farm, you know that crazy rooster. He starts crowing about an hour before light. He starts crowing about an hour before light. That's why they call that one the cock crow. They're putting that thing at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock is the third watch. But that fourth watch has to do with around 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, take your Bible and turn to um, John chapter 9 and verse 4. Now, when the Lord was here, it was the daytime. It wasn't the night watch. You weren't in the night watch. You were in the daytime. In John chapter 9, verse 4, it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Jesus answered and answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? Six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Okay? Now when Jesus Christ was with the disciples, he was, that was the daytime. When he leaves, the light leaves, the sun leaves, you're in the night. You're in the night. Jesus Christ is the Son of Righteousness. When He left, we went into the night. And the church in Song of Solomon is likened to the moon. What do we do? We reflect the light of the sun in a dark world. And what light this world gets is the reflection of the light of the sun bouncing off the moon in the nighttime. That's what light we get. All right. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Now, it doesn't say we are in the day. It says, as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, nor in strife and envy. But we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, the only light this world has is the church right now. Is the Christian showing the light of Jesus Christ? We're not to be the members of darkness. We're not to love the works of darkness. We're to show the light of the day. We're the watchmen. We're supposed to shine light. We ought to be like them guards 
over the uh, prison camps and sit there and shows that big old beam like round in the field to see anybody coming. All right. We, we all have that spotlight to see if the enemy is coming in. A watchman is not... I mean, we, we, we sit there and we read in the Bible we're supposed to watch and pray, watch and pray. You know, that's for, you, you realize that we're watching for our Lord to come back. That doesn't mean that we're sitting here looking like this all the time not doing so. Actually, what the watchman is to be alert and sober. He's watching for the enemy and giving a warning. He's to be aware of what's going on around him. That's the watchman. When it says watch and pray, that's what it's talking about. When it says watch, it's saying to be alert, be sober, be a guard man. To be on guard. That's what it's talking about. Now we're supposed to look for our Lord to come back. But when it's talking about that watch, it's to be given warning of the dangers around. Now, take your uh, Bible and turn to uh, Mark chapter 14. Now in the fourth watch, that's going to be the most weary time of the night. That's going to be the most hardest time to stay awake, is on that fourth watch. Right now, there's a great departing of the faith. Many sleep spiritually. The church is going to sleep. I mean, they're not aware of the dangers around them. It has slowly, progressively came in with social media. The greatest attack on the church and truth was a thing called the TV. And what the TV did was gave an opportunity for the devil to deaden the senses of the Christian and deaden the senses of what's evil. And what they did was they just sent a whole bunch of stuff where they slowly made evil look good. That, that's, if you watch the trend of movies back in the old time to now, what you'll see is the morality and the uh, high moral standard slowly decays and they make evil look good. And you got... You got all these TV programs now. My, my uh, father-in-law, he was really big into the Marvels and all the superhero stuff and all that kind of thing. And there was one series that they came out with, and he had, and he he loved watching them. He he had to quit watching. And it, it was this one series they sent because he said every TV show wound up having a sodomite as a superhero in part of the team. They pushed it every time. And they were the good guys, but they were sodomites. He says that thing was, and that's just the making evil good and good evil. And you see that in movies today. I mean, they don't even try to hide it now. I mean, the real wicked stuff, man, they, they're making the wicked ones... I mean, the superheroes, they're just wicked people. They're wicked. And they, they, they make them heroes. And it's disgusting. But that has been the social media's trend. And the, and the same thing with music and the radio. The same thing with the internet. The internet is just taking the TV to the next level. That's all it's done. And what's it done? It's wrong in the evil and the church has gone to sleep. They don't, the average Christian don't even know what sin is anymore. They don't. They got sin all through their life. They don't even recognize it or spot it. They say, oh, it's good. I can watch that. That's fine. I can take and think on that. that that's nothing. Why? Because your sin isn't as perverse as what the lost is. It's still sin. We don't even recognize sin anymore. You know, back in the day, they used to take and put a woman in jail if she had too short of a skirt out on the street because they'd arrest her for a hooker. Boy, they'd bring that law back in, <laughs> you know. I mean, that was back in the early 1900s. Oh, how we've progressed in the last 
hundred years. We've progressed. Yeah. You haven't progressed. You've decayed. You've decayed. Look at uh, the weariness comes in the last part of the watch. Mark 14, 37, it says, And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And he returned several times. But you know what he told Peter earlier in that night? He says, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when them soldiers come in and take Jesus Christ, they take him in the last watch. And you know what Peter does? He denies the Lord in the last watch. What? Because he was too sleepy. He wasn't thinking. He wasn't aware of what was happening to him. He denies Christ in the last watch. He denies them right there at that morning watch. Um, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2 through 6. We live in a time period where the Christians are most likely to go to sleep and they're most likely to take and act like the world and take and deny Christ. We live in that time period. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that, that they should overtake you as a thief, Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. Ye are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Well, that ain't talking about physical sleep. That's talking about spiritually sleeping. Let us not sleep as do others. We should know what time period we're in right now. Why? Because you see all this stuff happening. 1948, the children of Israel came back into the land. Knowledge has increased. Boy, has it increased. A one world government trend has happened. You have chips that can be put in your hand and in your forehead. One world current. Come on, wake up. Don't you know what time you're in? You're right before dawn. You're right before that sun rises with healing in his wings, as Malachi chapter 4 says. I mean, you look at the rapture, you know, when it comes to a thousand years, the tribulation's only seven years. It's like seven days. You're right there at the end. The rapture's right at the end. It's the end times too, just like the tribulation is. And the morning starts with the millennium. The night ends and the morning starts at the second advent. That's the ending. You're right there on the fourth watch. You're on the fourth watch. It's soon, brethren. It's soon. You're close. But if you're not careful, you're going to go to sleep. Why? Because... The morning watch is the hardest one to stay awake. It's the hardest one. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1-2, it says, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as the calves of the soul. That is a direct reference to the second advent, the second coming of the Lord at the battle of Armageddon. That's what that reference is. That is the rising of the sun. Now look at the way that's spelled. It is not spelled S-O-N of righteousness. It's spelled S-U-N. That's the rising of the sun. That's when the night's over. You're in the fourth watch. 
You're right there at the end. And you need to be aware. You need to be spiritually aware. You need to be spiritually sober. And you need to be spiritually awake so you do not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. That you do not... I mean, some be, become drunk. Some quit watching. And uh, champ, uh, look at uh, Luke... I think it's Luke chapter 21. It's either Mark or Luke, but at the end of one of these parables where he's telling them, uh, no, it's not Luke. Is it Luke? Oh, well, it says, What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Is that Luke chapter 21? Let me look. I actually didn't write that passage down. Mark 13. Yes, 37, there it is. Mark chapter 13, verse 34 through 37. It says, For the Son of Man is as a man taken a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the matter of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you what? Sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Now I know these parables have a tribulation context. But the Lord wants you to get the significance. And that's why he says, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. You, as a Christian, need to be watched. You need to be awakened. You need to be a watchman. Aware of the dangers around proclaiming it. Psalms 130 verse 5, it says, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and His words do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. You know, our eyes should be, we should be waiting for the Lord and our eyes looking for the Lord to return for us and call us home. But we're a watchman that's sober and vigilant and giving warning and tarrying till He comes. As a Christian, we have a job as a watchman. I have, uh, there's a great uh, illustration of the watchman that's in uh, the Ruckman's Reference Bible. And he put this thing right before his index in this Bible. And I've heard him say this. And what it is, is it's what the watchman used to say back in the old days in Germany. Now this was long ago. This was probably uh, around uh, Luther's. But at every hour of the clock, that watchman would cry out, Um... It's, uh, he sits here and he says, In the closing note that many years ago, back in the 17th century, the watchman at Herrhut, Germany, would make his hourly rounds and call out on the hour the following admonition, admonitions in the verse. Midnight, ye brethren, hear the midnight clock is humming. At midnight, our great bridegroom will be coming. One o'clock. Past one o'clock, the day breaks out of darkness. Morning star appear and break our hardness. Two o'clock, tis two, on Jesus wait this silent season. Ye two, so near related, will and reason. Three o'clock, the clock is three, the blessed three doth merit. The best of praise from body, soul, and spirit. Four o'clock, this four o'clock, when three make supplication, the Lord will be the fourth on that occasion. Five o'clock, five is the clock, five virgins were discarded, when five with wedding garments were rewarded. Six o'clock, the clock is six, I go off my station. Now, brethren, watch yourselves for your salvation. You're on that last watch. You're on the fourth watch. You're on that fourth watch. That tribulation's fixing to start. You're fixing to be called out. Don't be asleep when the Lord comes. Be the watchman that He's called you to be. Each and every one of us 
is given the job of the watchman. We're supposed to be watching and making aware those around us of the danger that's coming. You know what our job should be right now? is for one, to strengthen the brethren in these last days. But two, to give warning that the end times are right around the corner. Tribulation's coming. It's right around the corner. It's not far. I mean, if you think it's still far away, man, I, I, I don't know how to open your eyes to that. I mean, everything that's going on is just signs of the time. You ought to see it all around you. And you ought to be aware that, hey, I got some friends that I don't want to go through that. I got some loved ones that I don't want to go through that. I don't want to see the people out there go through that. Be the warning to them. Be a warning. Our, our time short. Our time short. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? What do you see? I see a lion. I see a lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. I see a lion that wants to devour not just the lost but the saved. Make them unfruitful. Make them go to sleep. I see a lion that just wants to destroy any work that the Lord's done. Now whether it's political or whether it's religious, or whether it's just the lions of this world, they're wanting to destroy you. They're wanting to destroy you. Watchmen. It's the watchman's job to give warning. It's the watchman's job. Be a watchman. All right, let's have a song. 150. 150.